The remarkable burial site of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, has been a wonder to archaeologists since its discovery. The phenomenal terracotta army surrounding it is the first of its kind, a true hidden treasure. However, scientists have uncovered new secrets about this ancient emperor and his magnificent grave army, things that no one would have ever imagined. The mass of ground with these figures is indescribable. What new secrets have been uncovered about China's first emperor and his legion of terracottas? How does this new information impact our view of ancient Chinese people and the world at large? Join us in this video as scientists finally open the tomb of China's first emperor, sealed for thousands of years. Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor of China. The legend of this ancient emperor is one of awe and wonder. It all dates back to about 246 BC. Back then, China as we know it today didn't exist. Instead, there were seven small kingdoms in the region, each with its own king and army. These kingdoms often fought each other in epic clashes for supremacy. In one of these kingdoms, named Qin, a young king was set to ascend the throne at just 13 years of age. 13 years may seem like an early age to rule, but in those times, it was unpredictable how long a king would live. Some kings died before 40, so it was typical for the next king to assume the throne as soon as possible. When boy King Qin ascended the throne at 13 years old, everyone probably thought he would end up like his predecessors. No one imagined that he would do something no king had ever done. No one imagined he would become the first emperor. Qin had an advisor named Lu Buwei and a loyal general named Wang Jin. With their help, he was able to crush all his rivals in a series of intense warfare. Then, he unified the seven kingdoms under his command, forming the Qin Empire, which later became modern-day China. By 221 BC, Emperor Qin had become the most powerful man in the world at the time, becoming the first emperor in China. For Emperor Qin, keeping the other kingdoms under wraps entailed utilizing a combination of diplomacy, deception, and brute force. Han was the first state to join the emperor's wing, followed by Zhao, Wei, Chu, Yan, and Qi. However, this emperor's ambition was much bigger than a unified China. He wanted to make it as glorious as possible, so his name would be etched in the sands of time. He launched many projects to improve the administration and culture of the economy. This involved building roads, canals, and most famously, the Great Wall of China. He also standardized the writing system and the currency of the Qin dynasty. To show how much he loved conquest, Emperor Qin sent out his servants on expeditions to explore and map out the lands beyond unified China. But it was clear that he wished to conquer more lands, and this is what many believe drove him to seek something no other emperor had sought, immortality. One thing history doesn't fail to remind us about Emperor Qin Shi Huang is that he was obsessed with being immortal. The truth is that ancient China was known for its wars and chaos. Kings could get betrayed, defeated, overthrown, or even assassinated. Seeing how powerful he had become and how much more land he still wanted to conquer, it was important for this emperor to find a way to preserve his reign, and so the search for the immortal elixir began. Qin Shi Huang spent outrageous sums of money and resources funding envoys to seek out a secret potion or substance that could meet his purpose. It was as though the young emperor knew he wouldn't live very long because he only reigned from 221 to 210 BC. He died during one of his tours of inspection, but before his demise, he gave the world something phenomenal, what would become one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. He built a phenomenal structure at his burial site, an impressive mausoleum that stayed hidden for over 2,000 years. This imperial legacy was actually uncovered in 1974. The discovery was never premeditated. Local farmers were simply excavating a water well when they encountered some of the crafted structures of the tomb. The initial discoverer was a local farmer named Ng. After he and a few of his colleagues saw several terracottas, they reported the discovery to the local authorities. These men had no idea of the significance or value of what they found. In fact, they never knew that what they found would become what we now know as the terracotta army. The Terracotta Army is an army of human-sized soldiers buried beside the Qin Emperor. The entire army was found underground by archaeologists after the initial findings of the local farmers. Today, it is one of the most extraordinary discoveries ever made. 
the discovery almost single-handedly transformed the Chinese economy, bringing significant revenue from tourists and scholars who came to examine the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army consists of 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, 520 horses, and 150 cavalry horses. Every figure was positioned according to their rank, taking their rightful place as they would in a typical battle formation. One interesting thing about this army is that no two figures look alike. Some have beards, some do not. Some are fat, some aren't. The hairstyles and facial features are also unique for all the soldiers, and some are crafted in a specific design or type of armor, depicting their rank. The level of attention to detail in the Terracotta Army is superb, and it gets even more interesting when you consider that these figures were crafted over 2,000 years ago, yet they display such a high level of excellence in artistry. How they managed to stay preserved till today is another mystery. Surely, you can imagine how many resources it took to build something like this at the time. This phenomenal work of art just goes to show how rich and powerful the Qin dynasty was. In 1987, the Qin Mausoleum and the Terracotta Army were officially labeled a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Ever since it came into the limelight, experts and scholars have been working hard to try and find out how the ancient Chinese people were able to accomplish such a feat. The level of artistry depicted in the Terracotta Army is mind-boggling. Everything was made to look realistic, from the armor to the weapons and facial features. Bear in mind that we are talking about 210 BC here. Back then, Technology wasn't as sophisticated as it is now, so the level of skill it took to do something like this must be out of this world. It is believed that the soldiers were crafted in some sort of assembly line, with different craftsmen specializing in specific body parts. After assembling, each statue was then reworked to add unique features like facial expressions and so on. There must have been special units that crafted the weapons these soldiers wielded, as research has shown that the weapons were crafted with accuracy and precision just as the soldiers themselves. Soldiers in the Terracotta army wield weapons like swords, spears, arrows, and crossbows. These weapons were so well made that some of them have stayed sharp and strong despite over two millennia passing. Experts have found that most of these weapons had a layer of chrome plating, which further ensured their longevity. But then you may wonder, why would an emperor pour in tons of money, skill, and resources to build an army of lifeless clay men and horses? What purpose did the Terracotta army really serve? Well, it all boils down to the ancient traditions that prevailed during the time. Every king who ruled a dynasty was entitled to a befitting tomb. It wasn't uncommon to find kings making artifacts and all sorts of structures at their burial sites. So imagine what would be done for one who wasn't just a king but an emperor, the first of his kind. Surely he deserved a befitting burial site. The tomb builders picked a site about 89 kilometers from the palace, on the slopes of a mountain called Lishan. Initially, no one would have thought that this tomb would turn out to be one of the greatest tombs ever built. But as the legend of China's emperor unfolded, no one could deny that he needed a burial site worth remembering for ages. It wasn't just a tomb but a monument of the most powerful man in history. This is what prompted the creation of a spectacular burial site. According to ancient records, the tomb of China's first emperor measured up to 115 m high and boasted a chamber about 80 m by 50 m in dimension. It was surrounded by a stone wall 15 m long and 125 m wide. Something like this took many years to build, which is why some theorists suggest that the emperor must have begun building his mausoleum not long after he ascended the throne. Archaeological experts estimate that Emperor Qin's tomb must have stretched up to about 500 m on each side of its base, making it much bigger than the famous Egyptian pyramids. However, two millennia of wind and rain must have eroded the tomb's massive base. According to ancient accounts, the architects and engineers went the extra mile to recreate the emperor's palace inside the burial chamber, making sure to represent even the tiniest details, like the rivers flowing through the kingdom. It was as though they planned for the emperor to rule in eternity just as he did on earth. However, what the ancient accounts failed to mention was the magnificent army hidden away in three pits at one corner of the tomb. Archaeologists who investigated the pits confessed that they had never seen such complex and splendid ancient terracottas. Besides the terracotta army, there was one other shocking thing about this tomb. You see, kings of ancient China were obsessed with the afterlife. 
it wasn't unusual for one or two human lives to be sacrificed in the king's burial. Such people were meant to serve the king on his way. To the afterlife, some of them would be those who were already serving the king, but others were specifically chosen for this purpose. Emperor Qin was no different. Upon his death, he instructed that all his childless concubines should be buried alive with him in his tomb. Historical records reveal that there were up to twenty concubines who were buried alive at the time of the emperor's death. As if that wasn't horrific enough, experts believe that the emperor's tomb contains deadly traps, which were meant to keep intruders at bay. It is said that in ancient times, there were strong ties between the emperor and his generals. But even after his death, some of his generals continued to guard the burial site zealously. These generals swore an oath to protect the emperor even after his demise, so they buried themselves alive alongside the emperor. Thanks to advanced technology, experts were able to scan the emperor's tomb and the grounds surrounding it. These studies have confirmed that the tomb is filled with mercury. It is theorized that a significant quantity of mercury was poured into the tomb because mercury was highly sought after in ancient China. Although no one has been able to confirm these traps physically, it is believed that the tomb contains such deadly devices as crossbows that fire arrows, strategically set up to kill any intruder on the spot. Interestingly, archaeologists are yet to physically enter the tomb to confirm these findings. The reason is simple. The Chinese government has placed a restriction on the emperor's tomb because they lack the technology to properly explore the tomb without damaging it. Some scholars have theorized that there's no way the emperor would have killed that number of people without causing an uprising or receiving some sort of backlash that would have made its way into the history books. But then the proponents of the genocide story argue that the emperor may have taken out the 700,000 workers a few at a time. Perhaps after a set of workers finished one section of the mausoleum, they'd be killed and their corpse hidden in the sand. After this, another group would come in to work on another section of the museum. This rotation would have aided the silent execution of the workers, and over time, the total death toll would accumulate to 700,000. Many people who have seen the Terracotta Army live regard the workers who made this dream come true as heroes, but it turns out that they were much more than that. They were victims of a powerful, ruthless emperor. Several skulls and bones have been found in the site around the first emperor's grave site, skulls and bones that tell a sad story. After analyzing these bones, it was discovered that they belonged to persons who died due to intense working conditions. It turned out that building the first emperor's tomb was more like a living hell than a job. They worked from dawn to dusk, sometimes getting little or no food and sleep. Many died in these harsh conditions, and their bones were simply disposed of in the surrounding areas. These bones have survived for over 2,000 years to tell the story today. Experts believe that the lifeless Terracotta army got more royal treatment than the humans who toiled day and night to build them. They also believe that most of the emperors, laborers were debtors. They had no choice but to work, and many worked to the death. But not only debtors were in on this task, even regular citizens were mandated to give one year of their lives to building the epic tomb. It was like a national treasure, and indeed it was. No Chinese ruler ever spent as much on their tomb as the Qin emperor did to build his, both in money, resources, and labor. This is why, when the emperor died in 210 BC, the Chinese people revolted, murdering his successor and ending his dynasty. This turn of events has made some researchers believe that this emperor's tomb was never finished. One of the most notable ancient Chinese kings with a tomb comparable to Emperor Qin's was Jiang Wan. His tomb was found in 1977, though he was buried about 200 years before the first emperor. This king's tomb must have paved the way for Emperor Qin in size, shape, and components. You see, ancient Chinese tombs were like simple vertical shafts. However, this king built his tomb like an underground palace. It had several chambers, and the coffin was in one of the chambers. It is said that he insisted on the size and pattern of the tomb so that his soul could roam free in this eternal mansion. It was believed that this king would live on even after death, so certain things had to be put in place in this eternal palace to ensure his comfort. Qin Shi Huang's tomb was more like an upgrade to Jiang Wan's. It had corridors, a lot of space, and other unique features. However, it would seem that the Qin emperor was more focused on getting into the afterlife safely rather than roaming freely. 
Even the location of the Terracotta Army seemed like a tactical move. You see, the three pits containing the Terracotta Army are located east of Emperor Qin's burial mound. This positioning, according to historians, was so that the emperor could be protected from any threats emanating from the eastern states he had conquered while he was alive. There were also bronze chariots and horses a little farther away from the Terracotta Army. The details and adornment on these horses are mind-blowing, typical replicas of what you'd see in horses that formed part of a king's ride. Perhaps these were to serve as VIP transportation to the afterlife. But then these chariots aren't all the same in terms of size and decorations. This is why researchers have predicted that they each had unique purposes. One of these chariots is a lot larger than the others and is drawn by four bronze horses. It is believed that this was a war chariot specifically made for the emperor's commander. The high walls and the detailed representation of weapons and tools in the chariot signify its war purpose. Another smaller chariot with lower stands and a canopy is believed to have served ceremonial purposes in the ancient Qin dynasty. In fact, it is believed that this was the chariot the emperor used for short leisure travels and functions. It was more of a show-off chariot than a warfare chariot. In any case, these chariots give us a hint about the extraordinary level of Qin artisans' craftsmanship at the time. Given how little or no technology was available at the time, it took a lot of pain, effort, and patience to render such astonishingly accurate details on the army and horses. The fact that precious metals like gold, silver, and bronze were used also goes to show how much the emperor valued this project and how rich he was. However, more shocking revelations about Emperor Qin Shi Huang's grave have come to light. You see, it turns out that the emperor wasn't just all about safeguarding his afterlife, but also intended to make his burial site an underground version of the newly merged Qin Empire. In the book, Records of the Grand Historian by Sima Qian, the emperor's tomb is described as a small universe with stars overhead while the floors are made into a map of China. Even the two rivers in the region, the Yellow and Yangtze rivers, were depicted with mercury. Funny enough, archaeologists found traces of mercury in the chambers where the Qin Emperor was buried. And interestingly, scholars have learned that alchemists who were alive at the time of the Qin dynasty believed that mercury had properties that aided longevity. And so it would seem that the emperor kept chasing his dream of immortality even to the grave. While he wasn't lucky enough to find an elixir of immortality, many believe this emperor's dream of living forever still came true, thanks to his epic terracotta army. The world is still talking about China's first emperor over 2,000 years after his death and may continue to do so until the end of time itself. Thanks for watching another episode of While You're Still Here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos.